Love this podcast? Support this show through the supporter feature from Acast. It's up to you how much you give and there's no regular commitment. Just hit the link in the show description to support now. Hello and welcome to the Book of Leaves podcast. My name is Cara and I am your host. Welcome to episode 58 of Book of Leaves. It is lovely to have you here. This is a podcast where I interview people who are in Ireland or have a connection to Ireland about something eco-friendly that they are doing. They could just be regular activists. They could have a business. They could be parents just trying to do their bit for the planet. Anyone at all. And we take a leaf from their book or several leaves from their book to add our own way of living, which is why it's called Book of Leaves. If this is your first episode, you are very welcome. And to any regular listeners, hello and welcome back. If you are new to the podcast and you're not someone who likes the chit chat at the start from the host about what's been going on, if you want to skip right ahead about probably about six minutes or so, that's probably when the interview will get started. And any episode in the last season and two seasons, actually, all the show notes will be will have a little um what's it called timetable so you can, if you click more in the show notes, you can actually see the time at which each topic starts being discussed at so if there, if you're only here for like a little bit of the chats a little bit of the interview you can actually go down and skip right forward to that I just thought I'd let you guys know um but if you're here for the chats hey so what's been going on this episode of course is with Lara McCann from Climate Love Ireland also 100% reloved it's uh, another campaign that she set up that's related to Climate Love Ireland when I was on social media over the weekend saying this is going to be my episode on Monday I accidentally said Climate Love Island and now I want that to be a thing so um, if any of you guys have ideas as to what a Climate Love Island could be about like I don't know if we have like a singles night of people who are all like really passionate about climate change or I don't know yeah but it's it's a working title um, but if any of the team at Climate Love Ireland want to get on board let's let's collab you guys but <laughs> Lara also featured on the Climate Alarm Clock podcast which is another podcast that I've been working with the last couple of weeks and they've got I think two episodes left so they're they're it's got that podcast is going really well they've been explaining what's been going on at COP and everything so I would check that out especially if you are based in Ireland and oh COP 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 so if you haven't heard basically the biggest disappointment with COP 26 was a sentence in the final agreement which said we want to phase out coal basically and in the last couple of hours or hour into finishing that agreement India and China asked for the phase out to be phased down instead which was really really disappointing and yeah that's basically one of the biggest disappointments despite the the event being very like exclusive and closed off to people very kind of strange from what I've been hearing but I won't delve too much into COP but I would recommend that you join I don't know a protest movement or you join a group like Climate Love Ireland that you know I think joining groups where we can grow in numbers together to tackle this issue to remind the government of their job and their duty I think is important and um, there was also the COP26 climate justice coalition march that happened on the 6th or 7th of November that was amazing there was loads of people there was maybe four or five thousand people on the streets in Dublin which was the biggest march um, for climate since before Covid so that was great and it was great to see so many faces that I actually haven't met before so that was pretty cool but yeah so there's some little updates Um, I myself have actually taken a tiny step back from organising in activism just because I realised that I have a thing called hyper independency which basically from my growing up I just was doing things myself it's kind of how I you know achieved the best kind of results in school or whatever I just do my homework myself I would do everything myself and it's I'm a very organised person and I take loads on and now I just got to this point where I'm like oh this is not sustainable can't do it anymore so I've taken a step back I'm reading Act of Hope by Joanna Macy which I'm finding very helpful and uh, in regards to dealing with the kind of climate anxiety and stuff 
And uh, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how to navigate and work more efficiently when you have always kind of worked best on your own, doing everything, like doing as much as you possibly can. So I'm still doing the podcast and I'm still going to work um, and I'm still going to protest when I can. I just have taken a step back from organising them for now, but I want to be back as soon as possible. I just need to figure out how to do it without as someone put it to me you need to fill your cup before given to others and I was like I think there's a hole in my cup so I have to fix my cup because <laughs> no matter what I do I can't fill it because I just then go back to taking too much on so that is a little bit of what's been going on with me and yeah the work that I've been doing I'm actually doing a play um at the moment so Today is the 15th of November. We're going to be in Navin Salsa's Art Centre tonight at 8pm if anyone wants to come and watch a comedy and distract themselves from the climate crisis for a couple of minutes, for an hour and a half. Uh, it's quite entertaining. It's called The Star of Chester's Lane. I'm going to leave a link in the show notes because why not? It'd be lovely to meet some of you in person as well. If any of you do want to come, say hi. So that's a little tour that I'll be doing. And yeah, that is it. We're nearly coming up to Christmas. If you are in the market is that what you say for a christmas tree and you're looking to get a real christmas tree cork grown christmas trees cork pot grown christmas trees are a business based in cork they're doing delivery to dublin maybe a couple of other places you can rent a real tree um, that's grown in a pot or you can buy your own potted christmas tree and it's specifically grown in the pot so it's lasts it lasts like much longer it's much better for the environment so i just want to give them a shameless plug unaffiliated they're just doing great work so if you're in the business in the oh, in the business in the market for a christmas tree go check those out all right i will now hand it over to lara um i really enjoy this chat oh yeah and there's one little point in the in the interview where you'll hear the audio change um for for a couple of seconds and that's because the the connection lapsed so lara sent in a whatsapp voice note to fix it so if you hear like a little change in the audio that's what's going on nothing major um but yeah everything is linked in the show notes don't forget if you like the podcast please share it with a friend leave a little review there is a patreon account and uh buy me a coffee buymeacoffee.com forward slash book of leaves if you're able to contribute to the podcast that'd be amazing in the meantime please share it around or leave a review all right here is lara thank you so much for listening and i'll catch you after Lara, thank you so much for joining me for the Book of Leaves podcast. It is lovely to have you here and I would ask that you introduce yourself to me and to anyone listening who doesn't know you. That would be fab. Thank you so much for having me and as I said this is my first ever podcast so <laughs> what an honor <laughs> I know and <laughs> um, so thank you so much for having me. It's like one of my favorite climate podcast in Ireland so I really admire all the work you're doing oh, and stop. keep it up <laughs> and thank you so much for doing it and um, so I'm founder of Climate of Ireland and the kind of our fashion circular fashion project 100% really loved so Climate of Ireland was a kind of climate action community I guess that started in 2019 as a direct response to the incredible global climate strike that took place in March of 2019 that was just such a life-changing day for me and I kind of very organically no prior thought just started an Instagram platform and it's kind of morphed and shape-shifted into what it is today and then my background's actually in fashion so I kind of started 100% really loved because I love Climate Love Ireland but it's a very kind of activist space and I personally am interested in photography and film and more kind of less serious things I guess so it's kind of my way of expressing that side of me and still being environmentally friendly but just in a different more kind of creative way yeah I can so relate to that that's so lovely and we'll talk we'll we'll get the lowdown on exactly what Climate Love Ireland do now because they're very active now and we'll go into 100% Reloved but you were saying obviously the Climate March was a like a life-changing moment for you but leading up to that, like, and growing up, I don't know, as a child, were you in ch- in touch with nature? Were you environmentally conscious kind of always growing up? Was your family an inspiration? Or what was it kind of like your process into, into becoming a climate activist that you would show up to in March? 
Um, yeah, I was always massively obsessed with animals. I think when I was about six or seven, I started a group in my primary school called Ambrift, which is like animals, mammals, birds, reptiles, insects, fish, trees. Oh God, um, I and I wore that. like I had short hair and like had wore T-shirts with like falcons on it and like spoke in a really deep voice and would like protect the worms in the yard. So like, but I did, I did love animals. And then my, that was kind of supported within my family. Like my dad also is really I guess he's quite like a stern person around people but around nature he's so much more in touch with kind of a softer side so um I kind of saw that within him and then my mom we moved to Kalini when I was about five um, and there was a a kind of a cleanup group on the beach called the K-Bag Kalini Beach Awareness Group so like once a month there was cleanups there and it was so fun like I loved going and there was like kind of all the ladies it's funny that like even though it's like a gender neutral invite like it's I think there was like one man out of like 12 ladies that turned up Wow! Um, but there was like I just found it a really fun day to meet people and just hang out on the beach clean up and there'd be potato crisps and tea after and stuff like that but yeah that's such a it was massively a part of your life like to be going along to those things your parents are obviously kind of ahead of their time in a way being so proactive Uh, that's really cool yeah, totally. Like looking back, I see that now because I, I, I just even have um, a Climate of Ireland. We have a volunteer WhatsApp group and people are kind of just speaking today. Actually, they're like, is there any advice on how to talk to people, uh, family and friends? Because th- like people within the group speak to their family and they get kind of poo pooed off just being like, you're a tree hugger. Like we have bigger fish to fry, basically. And, and I and I realized like and I definitely it's something I took for granted that my family's not like that at all. But then when I was about 14, I got into the fashion industry and that was kind of, I became a model, which is something I really don't really feel like that's me. I feel like since starting Climate of Ireland, I've kind of gone back to like Ambrift girl. <laughs> um, who's, true, your true self. Yeah. Like, um, like I do, like the fashion industry has like taught me a lot and it's informed a lot, but it's not really, yeah, I just, I feel like it's such a strong identity that I had for so long that what doesn't really match my passion I guess and but I did start when I was about 14 and then it kind of in in Dublin and then when I was about 16 um it like kind of went really really fast I went to Paris and I did very well got lucky um and then worked for a number of years but but when I was 19 I think I was living in New York and then my mom I think she wanted me back (laughs) so she applied to NUIG Galway for me um (gasps) And I got, she was just like, Lara, like, you don't have to do it, but you got into environmental science in Galway, like, maybe you could come back. And I did come back and I tried it for three months, but I think I just wasn't in the headspace. I was very used to like a very fast paced adult kind of lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and then I just suddenly like was in Galway in campus. And I think I made like one lecture and like I joined the ultimate Frisbee team and I was just like <laughs> drinking every day. And I was like, I'm not like, this is. I just couldn't do it so I didn't last so because yeah to be taken out of like such a I I know friends I've only dabbled in the in the modeling industry it just looks so stressful and it is so high paced and then when you're so used to kind of being on nature's kind of rhythm as a child like and then to be really quickly taken back out of that and thrown into college and did you end up then pursuing fashion as like from a design point of view at any point yeah I, I I started to like I always had a disposal camera I started kind of trying to assist photographers I did a bit of assisting with styling like I was kind of just interested in the background and I think I was so obsessed with the modeling aspect of things to start but then after a few years I just I was just more interested in being on the other side of things but it was it wasn't like an easy get out card because it was kind of how I got so much validation. Uh, it was how I was financially independent. So it was kind of a process of about five years where I was kind of going back and forth, like trying different things. And I, I was getting into photography and then I moved back to Ireland about five years ago. And I actually photographed Ashling Burns' like new wardrobe when it was just starting out. Oh yeah, I had Ashling on this podcast before. So yeah, if I, new wardrobe is like a clothes sharing swapping app, and yeah, it's it's re- yeah, it's really really good. Oh, it's so good! And like she actually just wrote an article today on something 
applying for funding in the patriarchy, which I just thought was amazing. <laughs> um, she's so ahead of her time. Um, but yeah, that was a kind of, there was a few little kind of stages throughout my 20s where like these things kind of buzzed and I, you know, met these people and it really resonated kind of quite deep. And I was like, that, I thought her concept was just, it made so much sense. I was just like, yes, like we should be swapping clothes because I, like I'd, I've shopped in charity shops since I was like a teenager, not because I thought it was, ethical or sustainable I just find it cheaper more fun I kind of got a bit overwhelmed in the huge big high street shops so I just preferred mm-hmm. the the more bric-a-brac vibes of the charity shops but but yeah so Ashingburn I kind of worked with her on that which was really inspiring and then also did a photographed grown clothing for a thread magazine and I they were super inspiring yeah that's another Irish company yeah brilliant yeah so like by the time Climbing of Ireland came and 100% really loved like there was loads of little seeds throughout the years that kind of led to me being ready when that happened Mm. even though I didn't know what was going to (laughs) happen I think that's what happens like most people you don't really know but you feel like let's just try it so that's that's yeah that's really really cool and I guess Climate Love Ireland, that was, you're one of the people who who kind of, who started that. So that is from an outside perspective, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's like a group of people who, it's kind of evolved. You've got a brilliant Instagram that's really informative and will reshare information. And it seems to be like a group of activists and that are just trying to educate and raise awareness but like you said now you've got like a volunteer whatsapp group and then you're doing like beach cleanups and stuff like that or litter pickups is there anything else that's involved with climate love ireland yeah there's loads of stuff in the pipeline it's kind of shape-shifted like initially it was kind of just me like i i had the made a climate march video and didn't have a platform to put it on so that was kind of why i was like oh i'll start an instagram and then i i Uh, mailed Emma Conway who's this amazing Irish graphic designer and just kind of described like like unity heart the earth Um, and then she made the logo which is like a heart above the earth and it's kind of meant to be like an exclamation point so there's an active spirit and finding solutions and like as soon as I saw the logo like it sparked so much joy and I was like oh my god like like this is so cool I felt like it was something so solid and and back then it was very much like the climate strikes were happening it was pre-covid so the the structure was photograph of the strike fact photograph of the strike quote and and that was kind of what happened and then I met Cormac at the strike so kind of he came on and and you know would help every now and then with the social media and then Kiva Durkin was another amazing girl that I just happened to meet as well throughout the whole thing and really met met the all these like-minded people it was like such a like I think before Climate of Ireland I don't even know what I was doing like I feel like it must have been so lonely because now there's like such a community and you're finding so many like-minded people and then 100% really loved started off that because I was kind of loved the heart and I was like you know thinking like imagine it on a t-shirt but then obviously you don't want to create merch as a climate platform because Mm -hmm. you know 2,500 liters of water for a t-shirt so I was like just put it on a a charity shop t-shirt or something that like your own t-shirt yeah that's how like 100% really loved kind of morphed into an idea that's so, that is, it's really really cool it's such a lovely idea and the logo is is beautiful so for people listening who might not know or have heard of this so 100% reloved there's kind there's you can buy a pin of the logo which is always made of upcycled materials it could be wood or and um, with like a kind of see-through middle bit or a painted heart in the middle and you wear it on your clothes and it shows that you are wearing something that is already owned and I, I think that's like really clever as opposed to obviously selling merchandise as you sell the pin and the uh, and the pin like says something and I guess we've had a couple of talks about fashion and um, a couple of people talk about fashion on this before were there any other you were because you were obviously there was a certain point where you realized that fa- the fashion industry is like bad is a horrific <laughs> <laughs> yes, bad it might be putting it lightly so yeah. like what was there what was it that you learned or what was it a documentary or something that you watched or something that you saw that like triggered that in you well I think because I went through the really like the kind of storms of fashion personally as like a kind of pawn a model and um, 
it, it, I have a lot of drive from kind of like a personal guttural feeling of like things I want to change. So it's not just, it's quite personal to me actually, in a kind of, in a way. There was so many things, I guess, from like new wardrobe, like working with Ashling, grown clothing. And then my brother, actually, he's um, now Global Partnerships lead with Ella MacArthur Foundation, um, which is like one of the world's leading kind of uh, foundations. I don't know how to describe them, research firms uh, on circular economy. So they work oh, with cool. like... Yeah. So they work with like big fashion. They're based in the Isle of Wight, um, but they they're like a a big, big foundation now. And they work with like, you know, H&M and Nike and all these brands in fashion or like bio food. And they're really one of the the front runners in circular economy. And I remember maybe a few years ago looking at a, a, a talk from Ellen MacArthur, who's like this amazing kind of sailor woman who was talking about circular economy. And this was before it was kind of mainstream. And I remember like being really passionate about what she was talking about, but I felt like it wasn't accessible to me. I felt like I, I haven't gone to college. I am not a scientist and it seemed very kind of complicated. But then once I thought about it, I was like, actually, like I've already taken part in circular economy. because like I steal my sister's clothing all the time. And like, I've gone to charity <laughs> shops. So like I have, most girls have naturally, actually, we all know, we know how to mend. We've like, you know, probably all had a got a scissors to like a t-shirt in the past like you know it's not rocket science in some ways like I think fashion is you know a really good uh gateway for people to start to access terminology and stuff like circular economy and then from that point then you can kind of merge into more complex issues and then go naturally from there but I don't think it has to feel complicated (laughs) I, I think fashion like is amazing and I think people really need to separate kind of the underlying business and profit driven capitalist systems that are kind of the same for everything and actual fashion itself because there's so much joy and creativity uh, and self-expression and um, you know culture and heritage and everything in fashion itself in its purest form so I don't think I think people really need to separate uh, you know dismissing fashion and d- more dismissing capitalism and the you know the majority of middle-aged white male CEOs and the whole systems that underlay it but like you can still have the joy of fashion self-expression and um, on, on a circular system like you don't need to make stuff from scratch like the actual the systems in play really ruin fashion because there's planned obsoles- obsolescence is up the terminology for for clothing it's intentionally made to fall apart within a couple of watch washes in fast mm-hmm. fashion so you really I think can sense that as a as an, a consumer as a shopping as a shopper I think there's a there's a level of in the experience that's just it's kind of like I don't know I watched um what's that series about the drug dealers in New York <laughs> but but I feel like the you know fashion is like it's, the it's wire the weird, the, no yeah I was think it the wire? Ah. yeah so like I think like it's like originally I think maybe like fast fashion was like democratic and the quality was probably a bit better but gradually the quality's gotten lower and like mm-hmm. it's kind of an addiction now so I almost feel like you know the, the the drugs in the corner are just the crap stuff and they're taking the piss out of the customers and like we have this crap experience it's all just I don't know I shouldn't be well I I do think it is an addiction. Uh, well, it, for some people, people, it 100% is. Some people, yeah. it definitely, of course, not everyone, but for not some everyone, people, yeah. it genuinely is like enough that like of just consuming like new things and spending money that you do not have on clothes you can't afford that are also made at the expense of someone and the environment. But I think the media has a huge part to play in uh, not exactly brainwashing but like totally it's propaganda yeah yeah a lot of the a lot of like if uh, selling to your ideal self you know if you buy this top you will feel and be as popular or as loved as the the your most favorite instagram person that you follow or your most famous celebrity when they're searching out that validation themselves like it's such a complicated messy web but I have like fashion was probably the last thing the last kind of Tetris block to to land in my kind of sustainability thing like because I I I came from like a I come from like a a family with like not a lot of money so pennies is like where we got our clothes and stuff so when I finally realized the pollution that was being done and since then 
the joy I get from like finding something in a charity shop and like the there's a whole different sense of pride when you are wearing that thing and you're like I found this I know I didn't make it but I found it like you know anyone can get anything on Boohoo or Nasty Gal or In Pennies and you know there'll be loads of people with the same thing but you find this thing that was on sale like 20 years ago and then you like can accessorize I'm not a big fashion person like I'm very basic like jumper I still wear skinny jeans apparently I've been told that's a big no 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 what (laughs) but um like yeah I I find it does even though I'm not that interested when I find something really cool it just brings me like you were saying sparks joy and it's so much more exciting and it's a talking point um and then to bring it back I think that that's what's really good about the badge that people can wear this little this little stylish pin that can make people go oh what's your that's a lovely badge and you'd be like oh yeah thanks I'm wearing it because this is second hand and you can like start a conversation or whatever like it makes exactly, such a difference yeah have you got any examples actually um or memories of times where it has sparked a conversation or raised awareness even wearing it yourself or anyone you know come has have they come back with you with stories yeah like I have cousins from the states and they're I feel like Americans are way better at like self-promotion because I'm wearing a pin and people ask me and like I do talk about it but I like I feel like I'm I'm like yeah, yeah it's, you know you like really brush it good. off yeah you're like I, I it's, it's, like, it's like, an Irish thing to do if you're got to, if you've got anything got to do with it you're like oh it's just a little thing it's just a little small thing don't worry about it son <laughs> exactly um but then my cousins from the states like and they've been uh Karen Risa they were originally from California and now they're in Hawaii and they've actually been uh vegetarians for life and worked in consignment stores and they come back to me with stories and they're like oh my god Laura like I wore your pin and my friend asked me and then they're like can we have 10 over and I'm like you guys need to come back to Ireland and like <laughs> sell these things for me because you're so like good at it um but they're they, they come back with lots of stories and they wear theirs every single day and they um come back with loads of stuff so yeah that's really nice and um supportive and yeah like it that's exactly what you said like it is it's the kind of using the power of branding and unity because like all these clothes are invisible like you could see loads of people walking down the street and you don't know if they're wearing like a brand new Zara coat or like a very similar coat bought in a charity shop and I do think the terminology charity shop needs to be upgraded because I think there can be a stigma attached to that and also like it it needs like a it's such a great business model that I feel like Mm -hmm. it needs a 2021 like revamp title but anyway I think that using the power of branding to kind of reframe like from stigma to pride of that you're re-wearing something it's a way to say like instead of kind of berating people and giving out to them for like shopping and pretty little thing and all the water that's wasted and you know the exploitation kind of switching the conversation and saying you know by re-wearing this pair of jeans you've saved 10,000 liters of water um, you are not enabling exploitation you're actually your money's going to like help people and like so it is like in every way like a better option like you save money you're like if you do a swap with friends it's a way to actually connect with people you're not like thinking this is my pair of jeans that I got alone in a shop like it's actually this way more community vibe the, all these clothes that are already existing aren't invisible they're visible now and yeah that was <laughs> the thought behind it <laughs> no it's so it's so so good so people can buy pins and also some iron on patches from the website what is the website for people the website is www.100percentrelove.com and they're also available in reuse and in thriftify but we're building the the climb love ireland website at the moment and we're actually hoping to merge 100 percent reloved like kind of into climate of ireland maybe wait until it's on climate of ireland website (laughs) sure um and if people have any issues i'm sure if you search climate of ireland you'll find it there but there's also instructions on how people can make their own on the website that you guys have now so what would you suggest people do to do that yeah like we really really encourage people to just yeah make their own um and I, you know, if I had all the resources in the world, like I'd love to kind of facilitate a campaign where we use the heart as like just one template where people could explore different materials to make it. So you could do 
it, you could do it with marker and a white t-shirt or tie-dye or you know embroidery ironing on denim there's infinite ways that you can do this one shape um so I think that's what's kind of exciting and and it, like you know in some ways it's such a scary time like what do we do but also it's just such an innovative creative time at the moment like there's so many interesting materials coming out for fashion like there's mushroom materials like that are amazing that can replace leather and they're obviously completely biodegradable and but yeah we we like for the heart you can make it however you like and and and, and we really because that's the thing like I'm not an expert in fashion designing but I think there's loads of other experts out there so if we kind of set free this like one little template then people can share into the pot like the ways they've made it and kind of discuss and explore like different techniques of how you can reuse materials and it becomes such a creative connective space and obviously mm-hmm. not just with this heart but I think in in fashion and and the climate crisis and solutions in general and um, I think everybody needs to admit none of us is experts in everything some of us are very knowledgeable in one aspect of things but we shouldn't wait until we're all less ac- experts in everything uh, everybody has something unique to bring to the table so we should really open up our resources and put them into the pot together and learn from each other so we can collectively grow much faster exactly it's much more empowering that way to know that like we don't need to wait for policy or government or people with environmental science degrees to like to to do something like there's i have i'm i keep saying i introduce myself as a jack of all trades master of none like i literally Me too. Have no, i have no <laughs> yeah. expertise in anything and then when people <laughs> ask me to talk about something i'm like are you sure like because i might reference wikipedia um I just yeah yeah, because I'd be like quite creative as well and there's really it's very hard to become (laughs) I think a creative expert because it's so like broad but um yeah I like I think just doing something and knowing that like you can make a change and even if like you just have you're just passionate about like bees or something like you don't need to have gone to bee school to teach people about bees and how to help you it's like it all helps um that's really really cool and I just I really love the idea of like this really simple logo that like you can wear people can stick on their clothes and it'll like start a conversation and be like yeah I got this second hand or this is I like oh, so many things of mine are hand-me-downs and I want people to ask me about it I'm like I want you I'm like I want I actually want it to be brought up but obviously you don't want to be just like people are there talking about like what flavor coffee they got and I'm like by the way is no one gonna ask me about my jumper yeah. or is it like <laughs> If you're wearing like a little badge or a brooch or something, it makes it a little bit more likely. So I think it's really clever. Um, so I'll link, I'll link the website, and obviously if that changes, I will update it. Um, and how can people? What are your socials if people want to follow you guys? Um, so the Climate Love Ireland one is just that Climate Love Ireland, and then the Hundred Percent Reloved one is one hundred uh, in n- numbers, percent written reloved and then a lowercase dash oh yeah underscore yeah yeah, underscore (laughs) very good very good and is there anything else that you want to share that either you have hopes to do with climate love or 100% reloved before we move on towards the last section yeah so I think you know on climate of Ireland it's such a we're really promoting like a four-day work week like really questioning capitalism and the kind of working like crazy so like I'm you know when I first started um in March of 2019 like I feel like everyone got such a huge burst of energy and I kind of felt like I was on a surfboard like riding tsunami of energy and it was actually like burnout central and like starting 100% really loved and so excited and was so good except like after a while like it became kind of hellish like I was just like you know posting crazy amounts and like trying to do so much and I was haggard and like that's just like you know burnout as a culture I just completely disagree with climate of Ireland started as very um social media and like there was community stuff with 100% we loved like we did a few swaps and events and stuff like that but then COVID hit so climate of Ireland kind of stayed online mainly but I kind of did reevaluate like a lot like what are we trying to what are we trying to do with this platform like we're we just trying to be part of the noise you know, everyone has the facts at this stage. I didn't want to be repeating ourselves. So we started more like the real life community stuff. And like that has been a game changer like this summer. And it means the actual kind of social media following has really slowed down. But I felt like the depth 
of the community and the kind of engagement has been much more fulfilling more and better yeah yeah and really great people have come on board like Jess led she was the first person to come and really kind of propel the energy and like the the gr- on the ground community work and like started the Port- Portobello cleanup group and then an amazing guy Rob came on and he's actually just been awarded a grant and um, to do a year-long project in primary schools and he does sound- he's a sound artist so he he does sound recordings and he's going to work with trees and like that's going to be the kind of creative foundation with the primary schools that the kids are going to listen to trees and then Climate of Ireland is going to provide the kind of coinciding environmental workshops so like that's a really nice project I would love to do more of that kind of thing and then I'm been working on a film actually the past few months for Climate of Ireland and it's like a short spoken word film I've written (laughs) it could be shit I don't know but I've written it and and I'm making it and um, I won't give away the name just yet but it's a kind of it follows a young uh, protagonist and it kind of through her eyes just draws parallels to how women are treated in society to how the planet is treated in society and I hope for it to be a kind of an empowering and again catalyst for discussion so hopefully if it's not like absolute shite (laughs) um like you know that we'll have screenings maybe around Christmas and then maybe a panel about the topics raised and because it talks about kind of menstrual cycles and the planet and just stuff that I dealt with kind of you know seeing women you know as as objects really as models um, and you know on you know we're bombarded with billboards and fashion all the time those those subjects that kind of resonate with me I think resonate hopefully with other people as well so just using that yeah like as a hopefully a discussion so yeah there's the film project Rob's doing that the website's something that I really want to build but then finding that balance of like not doing too much work because I fundamentally don't agree with that anymore so it is just kind of this just making life easier and more maybe efficient and but doing less if possible yeah I know I totally get you like having more downtime and doing like the effective work or whatever but it sounds like you guys have so much like in the pipeline which is really exciting so I can't wait and I can't wait to see your film don't be like I know I I wrote something before and was like this is the worst thing ever no one's ever going to see this and you think that about your own stuff and never about other people so I'm excited to see it anyway but I know that won't change that writer's (laughs) doubt um but before we let you go Lara I have started asking people some random questions at the end of some episodes so I chose the alphabet instead of number just because I'm weird like that so you pick a letter of the alphabet and then I have a randomly assigned question you don't need to give an answer related to climate change or to the letter it can be whatever you like if you want to give me your first letter M M a piece of art that moved you look at that asking a creative person (laughs) so it could be a film painting poem anything at all something that moved you oh my god um I like uh braiding sweetgrass the quotes in there that's what a, is a that? book is that a form of art oh it's, it's a, yeah a book of course braiding sweetgrass and it's uh, about like indigenous wisdom and uh plants and it but it kind of the way it speaks is like really beautiful and kind of uh it, it speaks of kind of plants as like next of kin rather than you know just things out there like objects Oh, that sounds so cool. I'm adding that to my to get list book. That's really lovely. And then another letter? S. S. Uh, what would you like the next generation or generations to know? Um, that it's okay to embrace your masculine, feminine sides and bust away stereotypes. I feel like stereotypes really trap people and like mm. cause a lot of suffering and we really need like balance not just within like women and men but like within individuals like to re-establish the balance because men are so trapped in like mm-hmm. being a man and that obviously causes them so much suffering and then women are you know we're all kind of living this you know yeah the masks like stereotypes yeah trying to live in these like constructed boxes that are not natural to nature and we're like this is what it is to be a man or be a woman or be straight or not straight and it just it's it's caused so much unhappiness so yeah that's a that's a really good one I fully agree down with the patriarchy smash gender stereotypes (laughs) (laughs) I feel like the kids are like well on their way though I feel like they are so far ahead of us yeah I'm like you guys like wow so I think they're they're definitely don't need the older generation to advise them like it's 
it's actually if anything the other way around yes yeah that is a very good point and it just I just love seeing how like colorful people are now and people can just like wear what they want and they express themselves how they please and it's just yeah it's fabulous I love it um and then we'll do one more letter z z if you had the whole world's attention for 30 seconds what would you say oh (laughs) no Um, pressure I would say like this sounds so cliche and it is but like you know like really pause breathe remember what you're grateful for and like send love to thy neighbor thy enemy type thing and if people actually did that <laughs> so I did like I don't know that's that's it really well that's it that it would be an effective thing if people listened because I think we do forget we lose our empathy a lot of the time I think and we forget what it is to be on the other side and you forget how everything from fashion to food it's all connected and like there's someone of making this or someone growing this somewhere so like yeah I have to be and I need to remind myself to breathe as well what would I say <laughs> oh man I haven't a clue like I'd want to just yell at them just be like get your act together but I know it is only the like the one oh percent <laughs> so I would probably say something along the lines of like the same system is screwing us all there's only a like a one percent that are like living off how much we're all fighting against each other and we have the power to like overthrow any system that we have built we just need to do it in unity come like uh despite our differences find our common ground but it's when it comes to racism or or even talking about like um the different oppression of men and women like that all stems from the same system like it's screwing us all yeah and then the big guy will be like oh look it's it's um it's that guy he's taken your job or he's taken your money and they're doing divide and conquer yeah so i would probably braveheart style rally everyone be like no it's (laughs) it's them um something along those lines but I'd probably I'd try hopefully I'd prepare it in advance if I was to ever have such a world dominating <laughs> yeah, stage um amazing Lara thank you so much for being on Book of Leaves I really loved chatting to you and I hope people take a leaf out of your book and start wearing a brooch or logo of uh, 100% Reloved and spark some conversations and highlight fashion and whatnot so yeah just thank you so much for being here and for what you do thank you so much for having me and thank you so much yeah first podcast and it was a great experience <laughs> Woo, you um, made it and- now that was Lara I hope you guys enjoyed that chat I loved her honesty and yeah we find a lot in common with the two of us having our hands and loads of different pies but absolutely check out Climate Love Ireland on Instagram and 100% Reloved you can order pins from 100% Reloved I've also linked Reusey and Thriftify below where they're stocked as well Um, yeah you'll find them in a couple of places and you can always make your own but if you are interested in getting involved with Climate Love Ireland's volunteer action group you can contact them on Instagram as well and if you've any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to me or them I can pass them on and if you've any suggestions for this podcast people or topics that you would like to hear for next season because I've already got this season pretty much sorted so if there's anything that you want to hear absolutely let me know Um, I'll be wrapping up at the end of December start of January for like a little three month break and uh, I disable the Patreon and everything so that your people don't be paying for or podcasts when they're not getting them um so yeah if you can support the patreon or the book of leaves please do and um or the book of leaves or buy me a coffee for slash book of leaves please do that's a once off uh contribution if you can't su- uh, subscribe to something monthly which i totally understand and what else oh yeah please leave a review especially if you're listening to this on apple podcasts that would be very very helpful and uh, a few stars would be very nice so thank you so much to the people who have already done that and yeah pass this on to a friend that you think might like it and maybe sure i'll see some of you at the star of chester's lane in mayo or donegal or cavan or monaghan or wexford i'll be in wexford as well um so yeah we're going to ballina we're going to balor we're going to wexford town monaghan cavan and navan tonight so might see us at one of them and please do hang around after and come up to me and say hi because uh yeah we'd love to see some faces thank you so much for listening this far hope 
you have a wonderful two weeks and I will talk to you in two weeks time. All the best guys. Bye.